We are in the midst of galaxy season, but right now I'm really in the mood to take a vibrant image of a nebula. There's not a huge amount of possibilities when it comes to nebula at this time of year, but one that really stands out to me is the Jellyfish Nebula. This is a supernova remnant about 5,000 light years away from Earth in the constellation of Gemini. But most importantly, it looks stunning. It's probably a little bit less spoken about in the astrophotography community, but it's such a captivating target, and I want to make sure that I do it justice today. So today is all about capturing a dramatic narrowband image, one that really pops and oozes vibrance. I'm Arjun, and you're watching God's Art. Jellyfish Nebula has an abundance of hydrogen alpha gas, so that means we should be able to capture that beautiful red. Using a narrowband filter like the Optolong L Extreme is great for isolating those finer details, only letting in that hydrogen alpha light whilst also removing that light pollution. So that's the filter we're going to go with today. By doing this, we should be able to add more punch to that final photo and also bring out those intricate details. The one problem I currently have though is that I've got a stock DSLR, my Nikon D5600. Now this naturally cuts out a lot of the HA light, but I have a surprise. I've just leveled up my astrophotography game. I've just bought in the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro camera. This is a one-shot color, cool, dedicated astronomy camera housing a Sony IMX 294 sensor. This will allow me to capture more or less all of that HA light and be so much more powerful than the Nikon camera that I currently use. This is a huge improvement to my existing photos and it's going to enable me to capture so much more detail in my future images. So I can't wait to get started with it and I'll be using it tonight for the Jellyfish Nebula. The fact that it's a cool dedicated astronomy camera will allow me to capture some incredible images with much lower noise. It's very important to plan your session well in advance, there's no surprises there when you get going. I use an app called Stellarium, which most astrophotographers use. This allows you to input your telescope details, your camera details, um, and your location so that you can see where that object will be in the night sky and how it will fit in the frame of your camera. So you'll know in advance what the object should look like in your camera um, and how big that object will look like. So you'll know if you can fit it all in or if it's too small, whether you need higher magnification. So it's really important to plan your sessions in advance so there's no surprises there. As I said, I'm using the Skywatcher 200 PDS. This is a 1000 millimeter focal length telescope. This allows me to capture images with high magnification, but it's not good for those larger objects like the Andromeda Galaxy, um, which was a favorite of mine and something I wanted to image, but probably won't be suitable unless I stitch images together, which I don't really want to do right now. But it's fantastic for capturing a nice close-up photo of the Jellyfish Nebula. And especially now in galaxy season, those galaxies are so far away, you want high magnification really bring them out in that photo. But I think 1000 millimeters is a good focal length to have for a starter telescope. So check this out, we've got one, two, three, and we've got a fourth extension lead to get us into our position where we put our telescope today. So I wanted to get the optimum amount of time with the Jellyfish Nebula and it meant putting my telescope right over here, which is pretty far away from my house, meaning we've got to have four extension leads to get us into this spot right here. But look at this view. We should see it up here in the west and it will come all the way down throughout the night. But this way we get so much more time with it than if I placed it closer to my house. So we should get at least the three hours we're after tonight. Man, it is cold outside, I'm tired, but the session is running well and everything seems to be going smoothly now. It took me a while to get the new camera set up, it's a bit different to using a stock DSLR. But I managed to solve all that which is good, so the session's running smoothly. The weather's looking good too, there were clouds coming over as I was setting up, but they seem to have gone now. Um, and I can't see any clouds coming through at the moment, so as long as it stays that way, we should be fine. The wind seems to be low as well, which is really good. It means that the telescope's not gonna shake too much. The moon is already below the horizon, so we haven't got that issue today. So everything seems to be working pretty well. I'm massively excited to see what the new camera can do, the ASI 294 MC Pro. I've had some great reviews and fantastic example images online. So I think we'll be able to capture a stunning photo. The guiding seems to be going pretty well. Could be better, but we seem to be going about within one to two arc seconds kind of fluctuates but I think the frames where it's not so good I'm just going to throw them away 
um, and only use those frames where the stars are nice and sharp. Looks like it's going to be another late one tonight, probably till about 2 a.m. It's freezing outside as well, but minus two, minus three degrees. But I'm just hoping that that final image will make it all worth it. Astrophotography is really a game of patience and discipline and making sure you do the right things consistently and then you'll get those results over time. But let's go outside and let's check out these sub exposures and I'll show you what it looks like framed up. So you probably can't see it very well, but the jellyfish nebula is actually here taking up most of this region. So it's actually filling up the frame. In these sub exposures, it's not gonna show up very well. But once you stack these images on top of each other, the whole thing will pop out. The camera's temperature is about minus 20 degrees, heavily reducing the noise in the image. But yeah, it's looking clear right now. And the forecast says it will stay that way for the rest of the night. So we should get the three hours that we need to create a stunning image. I've just finished processing my photo and it looks spectacular. I decided to create a starless version because I felt like this brought out more intricate details and it's a really useful tool on faint objects like the Jellyfish Nebula. I did leave Propress, which is one really bright star next to the nebula. I thought that sort of added quite a nice touch to it. Quick shout out to Nandit Patel, Dazza1639 and Play the Arsenal A54 for commenting on my video. It means a lot to me to hear feedback from you guys. If anyone else wants a shout out, be sure to comment down below what you think of this image and like this video and subscribe to the channel. It is amazing to think that just a normal person like me with no experience in Photoshop, photography, astronomy is able to produce an image like this. It takes time to learn the process and understand it, but it's so worth it when you get there. I am so excited to see what this new camera brings in the future, and I think you'll see some fantastic images coming from me. I really just can't wait for the next clear night.